Thank you, Taras. Uh, I uh, started uh, analyzing your patches on the sleeve. This is the habit that we've all acquired uh, over these months of uh, the war. Uh, at the very beginning of uh, this war, I was not uh, sure that I would ever have a desire to discuss uh, the NATO as an organization that we would aspire to be members of. Because at the very beginning of the war, there was a lot of frustration and uh, disillusionment about the capacities that we relied on and that was never offered to us. But now we are talking about the security order after the war, how to prevent uh, the repetition of aggression against our country, how to make sure that Russia has no appetite for a next war uh, in some time. Uh, some time ago, we invested in the European project by applying for the EU membership, and we believe that it was a crucial decision for Ukraine. It was also an investment into the EU itself, because now we can see that the EU is coping very powerfully with great dignity with its role of the super political actor. And of course, we also aspire to be members of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, and we've decided to um, ask uh, the allies uh, to uh, consider our future membership because it uh, uh, has no alternative as a security player, uh, first of all, in Europe. And we are sure that this decision was uh, made not to uh, put an end to this war, but it is a strategic decision for the post-war period. It uh, raised a lot of emotions in European countries and in the USA, but I can see uh, the positive aspect to it in that not a single ally said no to Ukraine. All 30 allies have officially confirmed um, during their summit in Bucharest that uh, Ukraine will uh, be um, eventually the NATO member and that our application will be officially considered. Uh, it is our task now to make sure that this application is considered in Vilnius in the summer of uh, next year, and that will be a challenge, I understand. And uh, of course, we have to uh, together, all of us together, we have to correct the uh, mistakes of 2008, because what we see now is the fallout of uh, those mistakes back, uh, back uh, 14 years ago. And uh, we hope that uh, the Allies would uh, revoke uh, that decision and uh, would um, find uh, the uh, decent place for Ukraine in the post-war security agenda of peaceful Europe. We understand that uh, uh, NATO hasn't got any military tools that it can offer um, uh, Ukraine, but we understand that it is still a trigger for the Russian Federation. And working together with our supporters, we are trying to um, persuade them that we are not um, wishing to irritate to irk uh, Russia. For uh, Russia, uh, NATO is a materialized embodiment of uh, the enemy. And uh, we understand that the allies uh, should uh, reconsider uh, their attitude to turn uh, lemons into lemonade, their weaknesses into their strengths. That's why we are activating our dialogue at all levels. And even though the security situation has dramatically changed uh, over the last uh, nine months, uh, we still continue to meet uh, 
at the top uh, level and communicate at the top level. And I encourage all of the representatives of the international community to support this communication because it is our key need of today, uh, where one country can block a discussion of uh, 29 allies with uh, uh, the third countries. That will mean that alliance is very weak. So when it comes to the uh, commission at the level of the presidents, it means that allies should form a separate position vis-a-vis uh, -vis Ukraine, its security guarantees, and vis-a-vis uh, -vis its application to the NATO membership. Without that, we would not be able to move ahead. So um, in the next few months, we would be uh, promoting these ideas, and I'm sure that working together Together, we will overcome resistance. Despite the war, we continue to uh, carry out our uh, security reforms with the transition to the NATO standards in our defense um, sector. And by the next uh, spring, we will introduce uh, key legislative amendments. Um, and that will be, again, a very uh, salient, very important uh, signal to the world that we are meaning business, right? And it will be kind of a pressure that we can bring to bear on those allies that are not capable for a certain reason of uh, making uh, these uh, core and um, very important decisions. So I'll stop here. I talk a lot on a daily basis about NATO, and I can go on for hours and days on end. I'd rather answer your questions. Uh, uh, we have the recent statement by the Deputy Minister of Defense of Germany. She said that uh, negotiations on uh, Ukraine's membership of the EU should start in the very near future. Uh, could you be more specific about this very near future? Uh, so uh, we are so compatible and interoperative uh, or interoperational with the EU that we can uh, become members almost uh, automatically. But the uh, official negotiations are scheduled to start uh, next year. And by uh, the January uh, next year, we will complete uh, the implementation of uh, seven criteria that were set to us. And political negotiations uh, could start uh, early next year. Uh, and that should be, again, a joint decision of uh, the 27 in EU member states. Some of the member states are um, putting obstacles uh, on uh, that path, um, and they insist on uh, the adoption of certain pieces of legislation in this country, but I'm sure that we will be able to overcome those obstacles. Do you know how the NATO allies are going to persuade Hungary to de-block uh, the um, NATO-Ukraine negotiations? Because uh, times change, but their position does not seem to uh, uh, get accustomed to the new times. It does not seem to be uh, flexible and um, and responsible, I would say. Um, yes, I hope that allies would not use military tools in persuading a Hungary, and it would be an entirely political dialogue. Now, 28 um, allies um, have uh, made a written statement requiring that Hungary de-blocks the work of the NATO-Ukraine Commission. And there are several political tools that can be applied uh, for this persuasion. And whereas before the war, it was the open discussion, and now uh, I'm uh, looking at uh, Lilia Grinevich, former uh, education minister, 
and uh, the um, uh, discussion was about our bilateral relations that should be better regulated uh, in order for the commission uh, commission's operation to be deblocked. So now uh, Hungary's position uh, is beyond criticism. It is not compatible with the challenges that we commonly face today. And a deblocking of the operation of that commission is a demand of time. It is vitally critical today. Uh, official meetings, official decisions should be arranged and made, and um, defense and political support should be um, continued. Uh, so I hope that this process should be centralized and the NATO leadership would uh, be made more pronounced. Now, uh, you say that we are politically prepared to join the EU, but there are still some legislative hurdles. Uh, to what extent is Parliament prepared to adopt the necessary legislation to make it possible, do you think? Even uh, this week, the Parliament is going to adopt more than 10 Euro integration laws. Back in June, we have uh, developed a list of acts which we have to adopt uh, with regards association, and we have a task from the President, from the Speaker, and from the government to vote for these acts. And even more, by the end of the year, the Parliament will adopt all necessary political acts. Uh, concerning reform of the constitutional uh, court law on media law on protection of national minorities' rights. So we have no delay in the parliament. Uh, we have developed cooperation with the European Commission on drafting acts, maybe because of a war, but the interaction in the parliament between different political forces is present and currently. I see uh, no decision which would not be able to find unity in the parliament. Even the laws which for decades were not supported by the parliament were voted for.